but first of all I'd like to thank um, not just um, Alan and Erica and all the staff at uh, the Gini Foundation but particularly to, of course to Jacob for his uh, generosity and also for his um, imagination in um, establishing the Alpine F um, Fellowship. The Draper program at NYU is relatively small, but, but we hope it has been and will continue to ask interesting questions and embark upon um, significant journeys in pursuit of tentative provisional answers. Um, first and foremost is the kind of paradox which is not unusual to the United States um, but has a kind of particular valency there that the humanities um, traditionally conceived have been shrinking in terms of student base since the, uh, the early 1970s what's t by and large taken its place is law and, and finance and since uh, the, uh, the economic downturn of 2008 to 2009 the numbers have been sort of shrinking all, all across um, the country and yet, numbers of people flocking to cities all around the world trying to make uh, a life in art, in, in the creative fields, to, make, to write books, to write poetry, to, to be in fields of drama, to, uh, to ask questions, to work in, fil in film. Um, those numbers c keep going up. These are people, con conquestadors of uh, impossibilism. Um, what, are the, what is the role? Uh, of the humanities and, and liberal arts um, in confronting this sort of central challenge is, are they doing something wrong? Are they speaking a language that is not sort of pertinent to people who are committed to creating lives for themselves in fields that would be of interest um, to, to, to people in academia? Uh, the, Dra the Draper Programme was initially founded in the 19 early 1970s um, and during a period of kind of experimental education and schools without walls eras and it was revamped in the 90s by my predecessor um, Robin Nagel. Um, and there's strange kind of sort of resonances I think between, between the 1970s and, uh, and now. Um, austerity as an occasion to think about the connection between selfhood and collectivity, between art and, and living fundamentally between uh, between the, the needs of the heart and of passion and the needs of the, uh, of the market. Um, certainly, the 1970s, amongst many many other things, was kind of distinguished by a desire on the part of uh, m many people to move away from the kind of the hermetic, hermeticism and the private languages that seem to distinguish certain um, hubs of, uh, of the academic um, ent enterprise. One of the, the, the fashionable words at the time coming from Maoism um, was, uh, was unlearning, the, uh, the period of a great unlearning. And there's a way in which I think the best education, as much as it's about learning, is also about unlearning um, habits, instincts, moving away, cl uh, clocking new rhythms of thought and of um, e e excitation. MAs are not as common in the States as they are in Europe. Mostly they're seen as gateways to PhD programs. Uh, this is neither realistic nor ne necessarily desirable. Um, so the Draper's um, job, amongst other things, is to, is to get students to think about that, that beating of the heart, that, that thing that they're, they're interested in, that passion, and to, and to think about what forms and what shapes that that interest could t take. It may well be a monograph, uh, but that's just one voice. That's just one um, I iteration. It's not necessarily a gold standard. They may uh, desire to go uh, to be curators, to be activists, to be programmers, to be coders, to be podcasters, to be designers. And, and they, their work and their passions may be best served by pursuing those different um, possibilities. Um, one of the, of the theme, of course, of this conference is um, e ephemera, and, uh, and the poet uh, Fred Moten recently talked about academic time in terms of the industrialization of a class, the fixed model, whether it's 70 minutes or, no, or 90 minutes. He said, as perhaps only a black American poet could get away with saying in America, that the classroom was a plantation. Um, and then he added with the assignment as a whip. Um, what pressures can we put on time 
um, to make time more, more gluey, more thick, more, more expansive. Um, if you're the curator Hans Ulrich Obrist, you will have an early morning club where classes meet, or uh, you get together at four o'clock in the morning to read um, texts together. Maybe that's something worth looking into. Maybe we should have 24 hour long classes. Maybe we should have studio models. I remember the name of um, a film festival in, in India dedicated to very, very long films, and it was called Rivers Without Banks. I, always, I liked that, that idea of, the, of, of a great unfurling. So, as well as content, which of course is, is sacred, thinking about the permutations, th uh, thinking about the boundaries that we create or refuse to create around learning is something that we'll be putting pressure on. Um, what is the shape of a class? I, I've, uh, in recent years, been teaching classes in complete darkness, which is scary and, um, in many ways. And you don't know who is talking and when they've stopped talking, so you listen in a different way, you relate to each other um, in, in different ways. Um, playing with heating, locking people um, in. At one level, this can be sort of very sort of, um, uh, gimmicky, but it rises to, uh, to, I think, an increasingly fundamental challenge, which in an era of mass education, online classes, um, MOOCs, if you have brilliant documentation, if you have HD cameras, wonderful sort of transcripts, why would anybody go into a classroom across town on a kind of, sort of wet November morning? Something else takes place, ideally, which is about bodies, which is about time, which is about smell. It's something kind of excessive, hard to articulate, but precious when, when, you, when, you're, when you're in it. And putting a bit more um, attention to that, thinking of um, ideas and uh, academia as also about choreography, also about performance, and not being ashamed of that. Uh, and finally, and most pertinent perhaps to, um, to, to where we are to, uh, today, um, we are committed to, I don't know if this is the right word anymore, but to, um, to interdisciplinarity, not starting from the, top, uh, from the top down saying, I as a literary scholar, I as an anthropologist, I as a philosopher, but identifying the thing that you are interested in, the zone, the space, the questions, and listening to it, listening to those very carefully, and then thinking, what do they need? Where can, where can I go to, to get sort of partial, sort of tentative answers to that? Um, proceeding bo bottom up. To listen to material, to attend to the question, to be on the side of the thermodynamics of enthusiasm rather than the hermetics of suspicion. To think of ourselves not just as authorities or as experts or as auteurs or as masters, but as mendicants, as foragers, as gleaners, as explorers. Um, to be in the sphere of non uh, of um, open field poetics, to learn a lot from the essay film and the works of perhaps of Godard or Agnes Varda or Hartmut Bitomsky or Patricio Guzman or Anand Patwarden, um, to learn from soundscape artists, from stephoscopists, from seismographers. Um, and I think one, one fundamental sort of change that's taking, we're in the very slow or emergent steps of uh, a moment of, just as in the mid 90s, we all start, uh, many of us um, began thinking of ourselves in terms of a visual turn. So in, you know, instead of writing, we, we started using um, computers and we became graphic designers by the default. So everything was mediated by the interface of the, uh, of, the, of the screen. Increasingly, the language of making is really important to people and the facilities and the technologies to allow them to kind of make actual or to render versions of the things that they're into is more and more um, available. And I think of this in relation to books that I've written in the past, where if you ask me, where were they made? Um, this thing that uh, has my name on it, by which my sort of on which my credentials rest. Um, uh, what kind of paper is it? Who designed it? I don't know. I'm, I'm thoroughly disconnected and alienated from this thing. I've, in a sense, imaginatively outsourced half the labour. And I don't think that, um, that can kind of continue. And uh, the extent to which we can participate in the shaping, of the plasticating, the creation of the things that bear our names, the writings that bear our names, allows us into a series of conversations and kind of creative um, possibilities. Um, Finally, the word came up yesterday evening, love. Um, 
And I think there's, there's a way in which you're never more yourself and you're never least yourself when you're in love. You're confused, you're possessed, you're vagrant, you're mad, you're, you're baffled, um, and you're open. And thinking about the, the work that our program does and, and the work of the, of the humanities in general as, as, as basically about loving and being in love. It's maybe a bit embarrassing, but I'm not, I'm not embarrassed by it. Um, this conference, um, this, in this very special place at this time of year, it's the uh, variegated um, uh, Maison Seine, uh, the length of its talks, the emphasis on conversation and on conviviality, the alertness and cru crucial importance to it of music and of poetry and of drama, uh, mandala creation um, is an exemplar and a kind of lodestar to, to us at the Draper program and it, its spirit is something we uh, hope to take back to New York um, and seek to channel and to, to, and to revive. So thank you um, Jacob for allowing that to happen and it's a great honor again to, uh, to be here. Thank you.